Hey, I'm Sarah, and I'm back today with some more UX tips. In this video, I'll go over the loading and shimmer animations that I've added to my Food Tracker app. Let's start with a quick demo of what the app looks like when a user searches for their favorite product. First, I search for diet soda. While the app hits the API, the search loading screen features a shimmer, the text that I've searched for, and animates the image icons. With Coil, image placeholders change color until the image bounces in. The product detail page shimmers, then expands as the product information loads. Images load on demand as the search results are scrolled. Before I jump into the code, I'd like to go over some COIL concepts real quick. COIL's subcompose async image provides a loading property that allows us to set up the animations that display while our images are fetched in the background from the API. So here's the image composable, you set up your model, which is the image URL, and then you can set this loading property to a composable, which is pretty cool and very simple and easy to use. I actually used the subcompose async image on the product detail page, but there's something very important to consider. Here's a quote from the docs. Subcomposition is less performant than regular composition, so this composable may not be suitable for parts of your UI where high performance is critical, for example, lists. For performance reasons, I almost didn't animate my search result list at all. But after testing at various network speeds with different search terms, I noticed that sometimes the images would take a good amount of time to load. I decided that it was more important for users to be able to see that the app was actually doing something versus just showing a static placeholder image. So I went for the Remember Async Image Painter approach. I also used a different type of animation for my search results because the one that I use in the product detail screen is very expensive and it wouldn't be performant enough for the infinite scrolling list. Finally, just as a note, testing composed previews with Coil can be tricky. You won't be able to pull up the real image in a preview, so you'll have to add some mocks to your project. Overall though, it wasn't a blocker and everything worked out pretty well. There's a lot of code to go over in the next part of this video. Since I'm already on the subject of coil and images, I'll start there. Then I'll move on to the rest of the animations from start to finish. Here I am back in my food tracker app. And just for some context, this is the product screen. And what we're gonna talk about first is the top section up here where it lists the product name and then it has the image here. So in the product screen composable file, I have a product details route, and then this is where I pass in my view model, and then I call the item details, and if we go down here, the item details has three sections, the product image, the product ingredients, and the nutrition data. So what we're gonna talk about now is this product image composable, and I'll go in here and show you what that looks like. So we just have an elevated card, and now what I would like to mention is instead of, it takes a little bit of time for the API to actually come back with the product data. And a lot of times to do a shimmer, you'll create sort of a skeleton shimmer uh, that kind of mirrors your user interface. But what I decided to do instead is use the actual structure of the product screen. So you see the structure here, we've got the ingredients, we've got this tox top section up here. And what I've done is instead of just creating the skeleton, I've animated each of these sections. So they'll start and this will say loading, and then they actually expand as the content is loaded. So I'm not switching over from a skeleton to the actual product screen. And alternatively, each section is coming in one at a time and expanding and animating as the data comes available. So I'll show you how that works here. And this is why at the start of this composable, we have animated content and the target state is, is loading. So I have a transition spec here. Uh, and let me go into that real quick. 
So this slides in vertically. And then we have a tween, which is a duration animation with a fade out and then using a size transform. So this is what I was saying. So for instance, the product information could first say loading, and then the size is actually gonna transform as the product name comes in. And as you can see, the product name can be quite big and span two lines, whereas loading would only span one line. So in this animation here, the size actually transforms to the new size. So let's go back in here. Next, I have a loading brush, and this is the shimmer effect that's on the loading text itself. And let me go into this real quick. So this sets up the font size. So we get the font size to pixels, and then we have an infinite transition, and we set the label, and it starts with an initial value of zero, and then it goes to this current font size, double the pixels. And then with the animation spec, it's infinite repeatable, and it's a tween with linear easing. And the brush is simply just a gradient. And what I've done here is I've set up all my brushes in a separate file, so I can easily keep track of all of them. And so I've got all my colors here. I have the light gray shimmer, and then my colors, and then I have a dark gray shimmer. I've got a red shimmer, and then I have the loading brush here, uh, which sets the color. And it basically, the start is the offset, and then the end uses these calculations that we calculated up here to create the shimmer effect that spreads throughout the text. So let's go back in here. And otherwise, if it's not loading, then show the product text itself. And then now down here, we call this image slider. And I pass in two URLs, and that's the front of the product and then the back of the product, which shows the nutrition information. So let's go into this image slider now. Okay, so here we're taking in the URLs. And for this, I'm using a horizontal pager. And we've got our pager state and the slider list, which is just a list of the two images, the front and the back of the product. And then I have an elevated card. And now here is where finally I'm using the coil subcompose async image. And this was pretty easy to set up. So you just call this, you set up your model, and then I need to pass in the data, which is the slider list and the current image, which is gonna be the front or the back. And if it's loading, show this animated food icon. Let's look at the animated food icon composable. So first, it set up an infinite transition, and then it sets up the progress value, which is animate float, and we're gonna start at zero and go to 1300. And the animation is an infinite repeatable, and we have linear easing, and it repeats. Now down here, Here's where it gets really tricky. So what I'm doing in a typical shimmer, if you want to have a shimmer for an icon, I could just have a box, but it would shimmer the entire box here and kind of draw itself over the icon. But what I wanted instead was to have the actual SVG outlines to shimmer. And I didn't want a solid shimmer box. I just wanted the actual drawing pieces to shimmer. So to do that, I had to call modifier.drawwithcontent, and then I have to save the layer here. And if you look at this, this is where it says this method is very expensive, incurring more than double rendering cost for contained content. So I used this sparingly, and I only used it on the product details page. And here I set up my brush, and it's a linear gradient, and it's the light gray shimmer. And then I draw the content, and then we're drawing the rectangle, and then we restore to count at the checkpoint that is set up here when we save the layer. And this is what creates the shimmer on the actual drawing. So let's go ahead and go into this and get a preview of it. We'll go ahead and start it. And there we go. There's the loading shimmer. So by using, the, uh, let's put it on repeat so we can look at it a couple times. So as Coil is requesting and getting the image from the API, 
the shimmer effect takes place until it's finally loaded. So let's go back here. And then what's really cool, uh, let's see, image slider. So what's really cool about this subcompose async image is I can also set up an error composable, which is just my large image placeholder. And that's really simple. That's just the image um, that we just saw at the food placeholder. And we'll go back up here. And so, and then we just set everything up as normal content description. We've got some alignment and we've got a content scale. And uh, if my images happen to be null, then again, I just show the large image placeholder. That's pretty much it for the product details image. Now let's take a look at the search results image and how that works. So I'm here back in the project under UI search and I'm under search image loading. Now this animation instead just changes colors because as I mentioned before, what I was doing to animate the actual SVG coloring, I had to do all that draw behind stuff. It was really expensive. So I thought, well, let me just do something different here. I'll just change the color. So this is a super easy animation. Again, I'm just using the food placeholder SVG and my color filter, I have a tint. And for the tint, I animate the color. And the starting color is gray. And I want to end with the reddish magenta that I have as the primary color in my app. So let me go in here and show you what this looks like. So when the search results load in the list and Coil goes out and fetches the image, we're going to see this animation until the image comes in. Pretty cool. I just have to note, I really relied on my previews here to test everything out because I had so many animations and I had to make sure they were working properly, especially as I mentioned before, how instead of having the skeleton shimmer, I wanted to integrate the actual um, design of the entire app into my shimmers. So it was really important that I could see those key transitions and how they animated back and forth. Uh, so let me stop this animation. And to that point, we'll go into this one. And here we can see how Coil performs. And again, we can't actually pull the image from the API, but I did add a mock. So in this preview, what I'm doing here is I'm calling animated content and my target state is show loading animation, which is whether or not to show it. Uh, so if it is loading, show the color changing image, Otherwise, we're going to show the real image that comes back, and this is just a mock. So let's see what this looks like. Here we go. This is the image when it finally comes in and bounces. I'll go ahead and play it one more time. So this is great. I could test and see how it would look when the animation actually changes and flips over and the image bounces in. And now for this transition spec, it's a little bit different. So let's go ahead and go into this and see what it looks like. I'll hide this here. So we've got a slide in vertically and we have the initial offset is negative it. And if you look at the definition here, a positive initial offset means sliding up, whereas a negative value would slide the content down. So that's why once it fetches from the API, then it comes down and bounces in. And then to get that bounce, I use a spring and spring dot dampening ratio medium bouncy when it finally comes in. And then for the placeholder image, I have a slide out vertically and it's positive. And again, this is a spring and then it fades out as the new image pops in. Next, I'll show you how I integrate that animation into the lazy column. So I'm going to go here under search and search list item. So this is the actual search result item that comes back with the product and the image. So as we can see here in the preview, we've got this little placeholder and then the product name. So let's go up here. So this takes in the product info and the placeholder image composable. And let's see, we set up an elevated card. And let me go down to the image stuff. Okay, so if the URL is not null, 
then I create a painter. And this is Remember Async Image Painter. And I'm using this because the subcompose image is not really equipped for displaying on lists. It's not quite as efficient. So I set it up this way. And when you do this, make sure you set the size to original or you will have problems. I kept running into issues and then I'm like, oh, I forgot to set this. So definitely make sure you set this here. And then I have my content scale to crop. And then show loading animation is just remember a mutable state of true for starters. And then here I can easily check my painter state. So the painter again is set here. And then I can see if it's loading or if it's empty and I can see if it's an error or if it's a success. And then I set my show loading animation to false if it's a success. So here, again, I'm using this animated content so I can flip-flop the content back and forth. And if it's loading, show that color changing image that we saw before that changes to the red. Otherwise, go ahead and show the real image that comes back from Coil. And to do that, you set the painter to the painter that I set up here. And that's really all there is to it to get the entire animation to work as the lazy list populates. Now that I've gone over image loading animations, let's rewind a little bit and go back to the search results loading screen. So I've just typed in Diet Coke and now I'm waiting for my products. And here's the first animation that I'll show you, finding products that match. So let's go ahead and preview this animation. And this is another shimmer text and it's the red shimmer text. And we'll just put this on a loop and go ahead and play it. So there we go. We can see it shimmering lightly as it searches. And to get this to work, we'll just stop this. So I just load my search loading brush here, which I've defined. And again, this is going through all of the pixels and infinitely repeating the shimmer with the red shimmer brush. Next, this is the complicated and really cool one. I can't wait to show you how this works. So let's go in. This is a little tricky to show this animation. It doesn't always show up right. Let's see if it's gonna work for us today. Uh, so let's see. Let me hit it. Yep, here we go. And then you have to hit it again and it should go again. Yep, so you can see these images animating one by one. Very cool. So, okay, here's how I got this to work. So the first thing I have here is this images KT file, and this is located in UI search image animations. And I have this data class that stores all of the icons. So I have the image ID, the description, the animate order, and then I have a current scale, which is a mutable state, and the default value is 1F, which is its original size. So then I create an object here, and I create an image list of each of the images. So I've got my strawberry, my ice cream, my cookie, my bread, etc. And I set the animate order to the order that I want them to animate to. And then I have a little function here that updates the animated search scale. So it finds the image based on the ID that's passed to it, and it sets the new scale to the new float. Now I have a suspend function here, which actually calls the animation. And before I get into this, let me show you where this is actually called. So here in animated search images, again under search image animations, um, I have this launch effect. So within the launch effect, I get my animated search images, and then I sort them by the animated order. And what I do inside a coroutine scope this time, instead of a composable, is I repeat this three times. And for each of the images in the list, then I scale the image. And when the value changes, I call this update animated search scale, and then it updates the image scale to the new value that's being generated as this animation continues to repeat. And then I delay it for 500 milliseconds so that 
when the first one goes, it'll delay, then the second one goes, then it delays. And again, so what this is doing, this is calling this suspend function here inside the coroutine. And I'm calling animate, and the initial value is its original size, and the target value is 1.5, so it gets bigger. And the animation spec is just a simple tween, and on value changed is the actual new value that's coming in. And then I have to animate it back. So then I have to go from 1.5 back to its original size. And again, the spec on that is just a tween. So let's go ahead and run this preview and this should run a little bit more smooth for us here. So we'll put it on repeat. And here we go. We've got the delay, we've got the image scales. So it scales up and it scales down. And again, the previews were just great to make sure all of this was working. So let's go back to the search loading screen. I think that's pretty much it for the key animations there. Yeah, I'll save the rest for the next video on how all of this works. Now I'm here in the search route, and this is under search and search screen. So the search route takes in the help view model, and we have a couple functions here. And then basically I show the search results. And the loading state of whether or not to load is based on paging three. And I'll get to that in the next video, but right now I just wanna focus on the animations. So we'll go down here. And then the first animation I wanna show you is basically when the search results finally come back from paging three and the data has been loaded in the background, then the search results need to load up. So if we go in here, we can see that we'll get this animated screen. So this is going off, things are happening in the background, and then, okay, we've got the results, so here come the search results here. And what's really cool about this animation is I can even see some of the images flickering. So pretty cool stuff. And again, let's go down here. So I set up a few things based on the paging three loading states, whether or not to show the loading screen, whether or not to show errors. And when I come down here, again, this animation is controlled by animated content. So the target state is whether or not to show the loading screen. And then I just have a transition spec and where I slide in horizontally and I slide out horizontally. And again, we have the positive here and we have a negative here with a fade out. So based on the target, either show me the loading screen or let's go ahead and show the search results down here. And now finally, let's go back to the product detail screen and see how the rest of the animations work. So here in my first preview, Oh, we saw this before, we've got the barcode up here, the product name, the image, and the ingredients. So let me go ahead and go into this animation. Now this is backwards, but we'll get the idea. So let me go ahead and start it. And here we go. So as the product is loading and the API is fetching the information in the background, we'll see this shimmer. So the loading has a shimmer, it shimmers down here. Uh, let me see if I can put it on a loop. Yeah, there we go. So we can see it loading. Very cool. And so once all of the information finally comes in, again, as I mentioned before, like this ingredients block here is tiny. So if the ingredients have a long list, then this section here will actually expand and do the size transform animation. So we'll go here into the product details route. And then again, I mentioned each has a section, product ingredients, nutrition data. We've already looked at the product image. So let's go real quick just into ingredients. And I have a couple previews set up for this too. So it works the same way as the image did. It's got the animated content. The target state is whether or not it's loading. And then we have this product loading transition spec, and we'll go into here again. So we slide in vertically, and then in the end, we do this size transform. So let's just take a peek at this real quick and see what we get. 
Okay, and I'll put this on repeat. And here we go. It comes in as missing uh, by default, just in the preview. But we can see the little shimmer to start. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the next animation down here. So we'll go here. I think this is another one that's going to be backwards, but we'll see what it looks like. So there we go. Do you see how the content animated and it scaled down? Now in production, when the app is running, it's actually going to go from this to the other view. So we'll hit it again. Yeah, so we can see how the animation expands and the loading text shimmers here. And then with the nutrition data, it's pretty much the same with the only exception being that I actually do sort of pre-fill this table here. So it's pre-filled with just zeros. And the only data that comes in is the serving information. I think that pretty much covers most of the animations. I definitely encourage you to take a closer look and just check out each one and see what's going on. And now just for fun, let's go ahead and run the app and try another search so we can see everything put together. Okay, the app's loaded up with device mirroring and let's get started. So let's see, what should we search for? Uh, let's just do a search again for Diet Cola. And here we go, we've got these images scaling. We've got the shimmer in the middle. As you can see, it does. It takes a considerable amount of time to actually hit that API and come back with information. But here we go, we've got the search results. And again, this is using paging three here. So we can see all our results here. And now let's click on a random one. Let's go down to this one. Here we go, we've got our loading shimmer, the product name comes in, and then finally the image comes in. And we can scroll here and get the back of the label. So here we go. And let me just, I'll go into another one. Awesome. So there's no real jumpiness on the product detail screen as that with that size transformation. I think that's really cool. I'm really happy with the way that worked out. I'll admit it. Before I started this project, I was copying and pasting most of my animations, keeping them super simple and really not using them that much at all. But now that I've had a chance to sit down and really learn how they work, I appreciate how powerful they can be. I don't recommend using animations just to use them, especially if they slow down a UI action too much, even by just a few milliseconds. Some users can be impatient and they want results immediately. That being said, when you're dealing with long API calls and it's imperative that your app appears responsive while it's doing work in the background, animations can be an absolute must for creating great user experiences. That's it for today and thanks for watching.